Hello, my name's Chris from Learn WP with Chris, and today I've got another tutorial on showing you how to create this wonderful looking website, no steps skipped, all by yourself. You will be able to create your own website by the end of this, and you should be able to create any website of your dreams after following my tutorial. I'll show you how to create this home page here. It looks slick, it's got call to action buttons, it's got high quality images, and if we go to our about page, it's gonna look even better as well. We've got a nice, huge image with a nice mission statement, a few pictures of me and my animals, and a nice quote as well. And if we take it to our, our work page here, I'll show you what I've done here. We've got some text and a, a nice image to showcase your business, a bit of text, more showcasing of your images. These can be any images of whatever you wanna choose. It can be that easy. And if you click onto our services page, I'll show you what I've done here as well. We've got text on the left, image on the right, image on the left, text on the right, and it goes on down like that, and it has a call to action button at the bottom as well. It looks beautiful as well. And now if we go to the contact page, I'll show you how to create a contact page with nice Google Maps, a contact form, all your details, a nice image of yourself as well. I can also show you how to create your own logo, and um, it can be either a simple logo like mine with like a little icon, or I'll show you how to get a logo with text, which is no problem at all either. But you can also create this website all by yourself just by following my steps and I'll keep it real simple for you and in the description I'll be each subject matter will be timeline for you as well. So if you're ready, I'm ready and let's get on with it. So the first thing we need to think about when making a website is a few things here. What you need to create a website is your own domain name and your own web hosting. A domain name is basically your web address, like www.facebook.com is Facebook's domain name. And that usually costs about $13 a year, which is really peanuts if you think about it. And hosting, hosting, is what really keeps your website online all times of the day. Someone else has to keep your website on their servers at all times to keep it online. You don't, you don't do this, it is done elsewhere. This usually costs about $10 a month, but I can get you your first month for just one penny, just so you can try it out. These things are super important and you can't skimp out on these. You can find cheaper alternative for hosting, but they always end up screwing you over. There's always something, or there's just terrible um, customer experience, uh, there's no live chat, or sometimes your websites just go offline. But I have the best hosting company to use, and that is HostGator. And the next two parts for how to create a website is to install WordPress, and WordPress is a free to use platform to create websites, which is fantastic. And then creating the website is gonna be free as well. So if you really are wanting to create your website, let's continue. So the first thing we're gonna do is open up our web browser and go to hostgator.com. So that's www.hostgator.com. And to get started, we're gonna click on web hosting. Feel free to have a scout around on this website just so you're completely comfortable with purchasing through HostGator. HostGator is a company that I have used now for the past four years and I have not regretted it. And they have the fastest speeds, they have the greatest support, and they keep me sweet as well. So, once you've clicked on web hosting, you're gonna be seen with three different options here, the hatchling plan, the baby plan, or the business plan. The only difference is, between the hatchling plan and the baby plan is, is that you can have unlimited domains with the baby plan. So that means you can create more than one website and it can host more than one website. But if you are just getting started, I would re just recommend the hatchling plan. The business plan is something that you can maybe upgrade to later, but right away it's not something that you would need to spend your money on. So if we go to hatchling plan and click sign up now. So here we've got a form where we can register a new domain. So let's say I wanted to buy learnwpwithchris.com. It's gonna give me all the different prices that I can get for learnwpwithchris.com. I can also change this to let's say .site. 
which comes in, of course, a lot cheaper because .coms are the most popular ones. But it's, it is preferable to go for the .coms as Google really does prefer them. If you do have already own your own domain, feel free just to click here and type it in, which is no problem at all. But I'm just going to create the Learn WP with Chris and I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to uncheck this Add Domain Privacy Protection because I don't think it's necessary. So as you can scroll down to section two, it's called Choose a Hosting Plan. You probably already picked and that's going to be Hatchling, which is great. And you can also choose your billing cycle. So you can either do it in one month at a time or you can buy it in bulk is where you get your biggest discounts. But we're just going to go for the one month just for this tutorial. And here is where you would enter in your username and how you would log into your hosting and a security pin where you would put in four digits or four to eight characters long, which is no problem. So here is your billing information. You would fill that in with your email, your last name and then your payment type, which is great as well is that you can pay through PayPal so you don't have to put your credit card details on. If you scroll down, you can see these add additional services. I don't think these are too necessary, especially when you're just creating your site. So I would uncheck all of these and scroll down. Here in section five is where you can enter in a coupon code. Here is where I can actually help a lot because I do have coupon codes that can reduce your cost of your hosting straight away. So the first coupon code I have is Chris Penny Host. And this would give you your first months of hosting for just one penny. This is fantastic if you are just trying this out and would like to see if this is something you would stick by. You can just do it for one month and if you don't like it, you can always just cancel. So if you click validate, that will reduce that to one month. I mean one penny for one month. Also, I also have another coupon code which is called Chris Quarter. What this does is gives you 25% off your total hosting. So if you decided to get more than one month and let's say you wanted to get three months, let's have a, just have a check of that, or is it? Ah, oh, yeah, sorry. So if you, let's say you went to three months and then scroll down and typed in Chris Quarter and validated it, you would then get 25% off that. So that would help you out if you were buying in bulk. I do want to let you know if you do use my code, I do get a little bit of a commission and that's what helps me create these videos. So if you are this far and did use my coupon code, then thank you very much. Once you are ready to order, just scroll down and click, I have read and agreed to these terms and conditions and just scroll up to double check that all these are unchecked because after you've entered some codes in, sometimes they recheck themselves. So once you've all completely happy and filled on all this and filled in your coupon code and checked out just click check out now and go through the payment process after that you will receive an email with your login details to log into WordPress so that's us logged into the HostGator control panel for the first time there is a lot of options here and it can seem pretty daunting but don't worry about them for now all we're gonna do is click on build a new WordPress site Once you're here, you just pick your domain and then click next. Give it a blog title. I'm just going to call mine a tutorial. Give it an admin username. This is what you're going to log in with. And your first and last name and of course an email address. You will get an email once this has been installed with your login details. So make sure you use an email address that you use. So that's the installation complete. Um, WordPress has now been installed onto that domain name. We have a username and we of course have this long password here. So whenever you're ready, just copy that password, click login, enter in your details, and then you'll be logged into your website. In this section, I'm going to show you how to change your WordPress password. So to do that, if you just go over to where up here in the top right, where it says your name and click edit my profile, you'll be taken to the profile screen. From here, if you just scroll to the bottom and where it says new password and generate password, just click that and then it'll give you another random string of letters and numbers. 
but you can now change this to something that you'll remember and something that is also strong. I'm just going to type in my password now. And once you're done, just click update profile. And then go back to the dashboard. And that's how you change your password. So in this section, I'm going to show you how to remove WordPress plugins. A plugin, um, that's a piece of software containing a group of functions um, that can be added to your WordPress website. They can extend functionality or add new fe features to your site. And in the WordPress community, there is a saying that goes around, there is a plugin for that. It makes it easy for users to add features to their websites without knowing a single line of code. If you think of it as like um, a new app for your phone, you'll when you first get your phone, you're going to be loaded up with all these apps that your phone manufacturer thought that you would need. Really, you don't really need half of them, so I'm going to show you how to remove them now. So if you just go down to plugins and installed plugins, you can see that there is seven plugins already installed. I feel that these aren't too important, especially for this tutorial, I won't be using any of them. So for the time being, I am just going to remove them all by clicking here. You see where it selects all of them and I'm going to go to bulk actions and click deactivate first and then click apply. And once that's done, I'm now going to click them all again, click bulk options, sorry, bulk actions and then click delete and then click apply. So that's the plugins that were already installed, now have been deactivated and deleted. And later on, I'm going to show you what plugins that we will be using and what they are used for. So in this section, I'm going to show you how to change your permalink settings. If you don't know what a permalink is, I'll just show you real quick. If you just want to click here and visit your site right there in the top left, and you'll see your site, of course. But if you scroll down and go to your recent posts and you'll have one called Hello World. And if you click on that, it's going to show you in the top bar there um, after your address. It's going to either come up with a date or it will say index.php. All these little things that come up before your post name. Honestly, I don't think that looks professional. I would much rather um, it just have the post name. Uh, to do that, if you just go back to your dashboard right down here where it says settings and then you want to click on permalinks there's a few different options um, plain just has the day and the name the month of the name or numeric but my personal favorite is just the post name where it just shows the post name um, and once you've done that just scroll down and click save changes now if we visit our site again and we scroll down to the post and click on it. You can now see that it just says the post name after your web address. It's exactly what I wanted to do and that's how you change your permalinks. In this section I'm going to show you how to install the theme. The theme of your website is pretty much the design of the whole website. Um, it's really important to have a theme. Different themes will do different things. But to make sure that you are going to be able to complete this tutorial, make sure you, that you do pick the theme that I choose or otherwise things may not work correctly. So to get started on that, we're going to go over here to where it says appearance and then click on themes. As you can see, we already have one active and two others that are already here. These are the, the themes that are default um, on WordPress. They are kind of nice, but they really don't add the same feel that you can get with other themes. So to show the theme that we're going to get, if you just want to click on add new, and you're going to get a big list of the featured app, the featured themes at first, you can scroll down and you'll see loads. Um, a good bunch of these are free, but there is a couple of paid ones, but in my tutorials, I'm only going to show you to use the free ones. Uh, as you can see, there's some in the popular. Um, if you even just want to click on one, you can actually get a preview. So you can get a quick preview of what that would look like with the content that you have. 
but we're not going to use that one. So just X off that. And the theme that we're actually going to use today is a great theme, and it's called Ocean WP. As you can see, it's over here. So we just want to click on Install. This is a great new theme that I have found, and it's really nice looking, and it's perfect for this tutorial. Um, once you click that and click Activate, there you go. You can see up here where it says this theme recommends the following plugins Elementor and Ocean Extra. These are plugins that really work well with this theme, and if you didn't have them, it would lose certain functionalities. So, it is a very good idea to now click on Begin Installing These Plugins. So, if you just want to click on them both there and bulk actions, change that to Install and click Apply. Perfect, that's them installed. Now if we just return to the dashboard. And we're going to have a quick look at our site with this new theme. So if you just want to click visit site there. So it's changed how it looked before and it is looking pretty basic and not exactly complete. So now I'm going to show you what comes next. In this section, I'm going to show you how to add and remove pages to your website. So if you just go down to where it says pages and then all pages. Start off with, we have a sample page that it automatically gives you. On it is just a load of rubbish that's just unnecessary. So we're just going to remove it. So if you just click that, click trash. And then if you go into your trash, you can then remove it permanently permanently so that's how you remove pages and now we're actually going to add some pages to our website as well so to start off with we're going to click on add new and the first one is going to be called home and once you've done that click publish on the right hand side And now we're going to add another page. So just click Add New. We will, of course, be editing these later, but for the time being, we're just going to add these pages. So the second page will be our About page. So once you've typed that in, click Publish. You can, of course, type in whatever you want. If you are wanting to showcase a different side of your website, you don't have to have an About, or in this one is going to be called Our Work. You wouldn't have to maybe have one of these. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to type in our work for that one. Oh, I think I just tried a change in that one. We're actually going to click on add new. So just leave that one. That's fine. And this one is going to be called our work. And then we click publish. And then add new. And this one is going to be called services. So just click publish. And make sure you hit add new and not just delete what you just did. And the last one will be a contact page. So once that's done, just click publish. Did I do it? Publish. Great. So that's our pages. If you're just going to click all pages just to make sure you have them all. Home, about, contact, our work, and services. Perfect. So that's how you add pages. So this section, we're going to be changing our navigation settings. If we just take a quick look at our site, you can see that we have no navigation, no menu bar, nothing to really navigate to different pages at the moment. We have the pages, but there's just no way of getting to those pages. So to do this, we're going to click over here where it says customize. So the first thing that we're going to change is if you look real closely at the top of your website, you'll see a faint line going across. This is called your top bar, and I am not a fan of it at all. So I am actually going to remove that little section by going here where it says top bar, general, and I'm going to untick the enable top bar. So that's now removed, which is what I wanted. Perfect. So now if we go back and back again, 
and we want to get this navigation menu set up so we're going to click on menus and as you can see we have no menu so we're going to click add a menu and we're going to call it main as it's your main menu so if you click create menu there you can now choose where you want this menu to display you can have it in that top bar which we removed so it's not going to be that one the main which is just right about here which is usually the perfect place for a menu or you can have it on your footer which is right at the bottom or there's a mobile version as well which isn't it is, it's, it's nice but it's not what we're doing so we're just going to click on main and the only difference you'll see now is this little search thing here it's just because we haven't actually added any items to the menu so to do this we're going to click on add items Ah, and here are all the pages that we created earlier but beware we're not going to add the one that says home custom link we're actually going to add the home page this is the one that we created so if we click on that click on that click on that click on that click on all the pages you'll see that it'll send them over to the left hand side here and this designates the order as well so if you wanted your our work to come before about or your services about around about here you can do that but I did actually prefer it the way it was also there is a thing called a submenu so if you wanted let's say services to appear under our work as in when you hover over our work it'll drop down like a little drop down menu and say services that is a possibility as well but it's not what we're going to do here today so we're just going to move that back out and that's the menu complete if we just have a quick if we just go back you can see here it says our home about our work services and contact and it's looking lovely already you can see the website already structuring itself so once you've done that we're just going to go back and we're going to go down to header and then general and we've been given a few options here we'll go down a few of them here so style as it's set at the moment it's down for minimal which kind of gives us a minimal effect if you know what i mean or we'll, we'll, we'll go through them here we have transparent which you can't really notice just yet um, we have top menu which shows it just right here and the menu is now there or we've got full screen which is different let's have a look at that so when you click on this it brings a full screen menu up that's something that some people like but not myself I'm not going to be using that also you can center it medium and vertical but I'm just going to keep that at minimal and you can also change the height um, don't mess around too much. You can see how it just moves up and down. Um, and this little button here will set it back to the default. Here, this will give you full width if you wanted that. I prefer it not. And then this also shows like a header border. Uh, I'm actually going to uncheck that. I don't really want a border. And now here is the background color. So here is where you can actually change the color. So you can have a scroll around. And you can see it's changing that whole top bar. Um, so if you just try and find yourself, if you are going to change a color, just try and find yourself a nice color. Uh, let's have a look here. See if we can find something new just on the whip. I'll just go for a standard green. Maybe a bit, bit darker. In this section here is what you'd call a hex code. A hex code is basically the code for the color that you're using. So that code will always bring up that color. So if you are going to reuse the same color, do make a note of that hex code. Copy it and put it down in a Word file or something like that, just so you don't have to spend so much time trying to find that color again. So I'm just gonna open up a new tab and just paste it in there just for the time being. And yeah, I'm actually just gonna go for that green and, and just see what that works with there. Um, yep. Yeah. As, so that was that bit done. If we just go back, we can actually go down to the menu bit here as well. And we're going to get a few different more things. So we've got this top level drop down icon. If we uncheck that. I think that changes something, but. <laughs> I'm 
So you can see here in the position, you can have it on the left, the center, or the right. I do prefer it on the right there. The links effect, not something that I've really been dabbling in. Link color, you can actually change the color. See if you hover over these, they actually change the color as you're hovering over them. You can actually change the color for all of that. Um, so that's the hover one, I'm gonna change that too. Let's have a look. A lighter green, would that work well? Let's show me now. So you can't see anything, that's not a good idea. Um, so maybe go for something that just sticks out from green, like a red color. There you go, that sticks out from being great. And as before, you should really remember this code. I'm actually going to open up a notepad file and copy some of these in. So that's our red. And I'll go get that green now. Boom. And if we scroll down, there's a few of colors, things you can change, like the set color. Um, we should change that as well. Let's have a look. So you can see that changing. Uh, the white is kind of nice, but it does kind of mess with your eyes a bit. I do actually just like the red, even though it would change if it hovered. Oh, we've got dark greens that we've got there. Actually, dark green and changes to red. I actually like that. Perfect. So I'm going to take a note of that code just in case I want to use it again. We got green. And of course you can change all this stuff as much as you like, um, but I'm actually kind of happy the way that is at the moment. So I'm just now going to go back. So we're just going to click on logo. We are going to be inputting our own logo in later, but for the time being, we're just going to match it up with the rest of the stuff. So the color, um, open up my notepad. I just want it to be that dark green. Oh, so copy that hex code. I did put a space in there, so I'm going to make sure I remove that. So there you go, it finds the green instantly. And the hover color, I want it to be that red. So I'm going to copy that over. Paste it in, and it's now the red. Brilliant. So what we're going to do now is just click Save and Publish. And as you can see, everything's nicely changed. We've got that nice green and dark green for the actual writing, and then it turns red when we hover. There's actually a way to remove this magnifying glass as well. Hold on. If we go down to menu, and I think if we scroll down to the bottom, is it in this section? There we go. Search icon. Do you want it there? Drop down, header replace, overlay or disabled. I'm just going to get rid of it. And then click save and publish. So in this section, we're going to be changing the title and tagline. If we go to our website, up here where I've got it says just YouTube, this is our title. And where it says just another WordPress site um, is, is what the tagline is. And we want to be able to change this. So if we go back to our dashboard, and just bring it open again, the website. Oh, and we need to customize. So appearance and customize. And from here, we want to click on Site Identity. So here where it says Site Title, this is where your title would be. And um, for the time being, I am just going to type in my YouTube name. And we will, we will be replacing this with an actual logo, but just for the time being, type in whatever you like. And a tagline, this is usually a description of what your website usually provides. So mine is probably top, top quality WordPress tutorials you could write whatever you want related to your website and whenever you're done just want to click on save and publish and then we'll go back to the dashboard and we'll open up the site say learning WP with Chris and then top quality WordPress tutorials so that's how you change your title and tagline so in this section, uh, we're going to set up the actual home page. If we just visit our site again, this is technically set up as our home page. It is automatically set up as a blog, and that's why you've seen blog post here. But this isn't going to be our home page. We actually made a page earlier called Home, and if we click on that, it's not actually our home page yet. And it's a little bit confusing, but we are going to now make this page our home page. This is at the moment just a normal page. So to do that, if we just go back to our actual homepage as it stands, 
and if we click on customize up at the top and from here we just want to click on static front page and we want the front page to display a static page not our latest posts and which static page are we going to choose we are going to choose our home page so now our home page is now our home page so once you've done that just click save and publish and if we go back to our site the home page is now our home page which is perfect so that's how you set up your home page. So in this section here, we're going to be changing the fonts. First of all, we're going to be changing the font for the Elementor page builder plugin that we downloaded earlier. So if we just go to a page, let's just go all pages and go to our home, just put the time in. And we're going to click on edit with Elementor just to get the Elementor page builder up. The Elementor Page Builder plugin is fantastic. It makes building websites way easier. But for the time being, we're just going to change the settings here. So to change this font, we just have to go over here to this little drop down box here and click on default fonts. So if we click on primary headline first, and then we're going to be picking a font called Lato. It's one of my favorite ones to use. Of course, you can use any that you'd like. And I think you can visit google.com forward slash fonts to actually view different fonts. So have a cycle through there and try and pick something that you really like. So now that you've done the primary one, we're now going to do the same for the secondary one. So just go into that and then type Lato or whatever font you've chosen. And the weight in the number here is how bold or thick the writing is. I prefer just to leave it the way it is. I feel like they've picked the right size for them. And then just do the rest for all four just to keep it all consistent. Brilliant. That all done. Yep. And then click save there. So now that's us changing our font just for the Elementor plugin. So anytime you're using the Elementor page builder, your font will always be Lato. But now we need to actually change the font for the actual theme itself. So to go change the fonts for our theme, like up here on our menu um, and our title, um, we want to change the fonts for those as well. So if we just X out of this at the bottom left, go to view page. And from here, we want to click on customize. And once you got here, we want to click on typography and start up at the top at general uh, we want to keep that on latin i like the way that is and body we want to click on font family and change that to lato or whatever it is that you chose and then we go back out of that one all headings i want to change that to lato and then if we hit back on that if we head down to logo we can actually change the font for that as well so you can change that to Lato or you can change it to whatever you want because if you're not going to make your own logo and you want to just use this um, this title here as your logo, you can pick a nice font. I think there's one called Rock Salt, which adds a bit of a a bit of a hipster a hip way of looking at it. Um, but for the time being, I'm just going to go for Lato because it's nice. And you can of course change the weight and the style and the size here as well. If you want to make it look a bit bigger, you certainly can. You can, of course, change any of these settings. Have a, have a look through. There's quite a lot of the settings uh, to change the font. But once you're ever you're happy, just click on Save and Publish. And head back to the dashboard. So in this section, we are going to start working on the actual home page. Let's have a quick look at it now, just to have a quick look. So this is our home page at the moment. There is a couple of things we want to do just so we can have a perfect blank canvas, and that's to remove this title here and this sidebar. So to do that, we're gonna click over here where it says edit page. So from here, if we just scroll down, 
And where it says content layout, we are now going to change that to 100% full width. And we're going to go to the title over here. And we're going to click disable. Now, if we click update, and we have a look at the site to see what that looks like, we have no title and we have the no sidebar. So we have the full width of the page and we have a full blank canvas to get started with. So we're now going to start editing the actual home page. So to do that, if you see at the top, it says edit with Elementor. That's that plugin we got earlier. So as you can see on the left hand side, we have all these elements. These are the things and the content that you can throw onto your website using the Elementor plugin. Uh, but to start off with, we're just going to click add new section here. And here is where you can select your structure. This is um, the little blocks that you can just throw into little one part of the page where you can then throw in the content into it. You'll pick this up along the way, but for the time being, we're just going to pick this one here. So that's um, one section made, and we're just going to throw in a heading straight into that. So this is our new heading, and we're going to give it um, some writing. So let's just type in freedom for the time being. Um, let's have a look here. We have size as well. You make them large, extra, extra large, medium, and you can also align it. So I'm going to align that into the center. And of course, if we go up to, to style, we can then change the text color. And we can also, let's have a look, typography, we could put that on as well. We can actually change the size of the writing. We'll get it out real big. And you can change the weight if you wanted to maybe be the writing to be a little bit thinner. And then you can also transform it into if you want it to all just be lowercase, you can do that if you like. But I'm gonna keep mine uppercase and keep that normal style and free up the space in a bit. And if we click on advance, we can also change the margin, which we're going to do. Um, we can actually link them together or unlink them. Um, I'm not too sure if that's unlinked or linked, but if we can type in, if we were able to type it to one without the other, then it's not. There we go. So make sure that you're only typing in the one, and we're going to get that 200 margin from the top, just that. And then entrance animation is really nice as well. We can make it just fly in from any side of the screen. We can get it shaken in on in. We can get it to wobble on in. I think that's maybe a little bit too much. I'm just going to go with fade in down so it just slowly just comes on in. So that's looking nice as well. But we're going to throw in a quick heading underneath it, just right there. And this is going to be like a little subtitle or subheading. Um, so you type in something. I'm going to type in, let's have a look, click on here. Freedom to do, oops, spelling mistakes, to do what makes you happy. That's what WordPress really does. So let's. Fucking. So let's just center that up, and now we can get change the style of this as well. Uh, we can change the text color, maybe to a dark gray or a black. And let's have a look here. Oh. Go back to style, typography. We can have to change the size, maybe get it a little bit bigger. And maybe open up the space in a little bit. That's that's about right. I think I'm happy enough with that. So whenever you're done with that, you can just click back up here to add a new widget. So the next step is we're going to just throw in a couple of buttons directly underneath this. So if you click and drag columns directly underneath that subtitle, it'll have a little blue bar. We can throw in two columns there. And what we're going to do with this is we're actually going to get an element called the buttons. And we're going to throw in two buttons into there. We'll go back and get the other one. Throw it into the other side. And we'll start editing the first one. We'll call that one our mission. And we're going to get that to link. So, so with forward slash about. So when we click on that button, it will take us to our about page. And we're going to align that to the right. And we're now going to hit style and turn on typography. I will change the size of this to 14 pixels. And we can scroll down and we can change the colors of it normally and also when we hover over it. So first of all, we'll do the normal. 
I'm going to change the background color. I'm going to pick that same dark green as before. And I'm going to leave the text color as it is. And we're going to keep moving on with this. Border type is fine. Um, yep, I'm just going to put a border radius of 5 around it. I think if we change that to 50, it'll give it a super rounded button. But I feel like 5 is gives it just a rounded corners, which I like. And text padding, we can maybe change that to a 5. Mm. Not too sure about that, actually. What was 500? Ooh, 50? Nope. 25? 20? I'm really not one. So now if we go to hover, we can actually change what happens when we hover over this button. Um, so we can maybe even get the, 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 the color of the button to change. I'm going to change it to the lighter green. So we'll have a look what that looks like. So if I hover over it, it changes color to let me know that I'm hovering over that button. I actually really like that. And we're just going to have a quick look on this button one more time just to make sure everything's correct. So the style's all nice. And let's have a quick look in advanced. Margins and paddings. I feel like it could be fine. Um, we can put an entrance animation in, but I think that might be a little bit too much. So I'm now just going to jump on to the second one here. And I'm going to change the text of this to view our work. And the link to that is going to be forward slash our dash work. And then make sure that to align that to the left. And I'm now going to hit on style. And I'm going to turn on the typography, change the size of this to the 14 pixels so it matches up with the other one. And I can now go down and change the background color. And there's something I'm actually going to do here. What we're going to do is change that to a white. And we're going to click on that again. And you see this little bar here? We can. This is the transparency of it all. So we're going to put that all the way to the bottom as super transparent. And to make this a little bit easier for on our eyes to see what we're actually editing, we're just going to go up here and you see these columns here where it says edit section. We're going to click on that. And now we're editing this box for the time being. We're going to click on style. And then background type, it's classic. And we're going to change the color to just a darker color just so we can see what we're doing. Brilliant. So I'm now going to go back to the button. And I'm going to click on style. And I'm going to put a border on it. I'm going to put a, a solid border. And I'm going to put a width of 5 on that border. Maybe a 2. 2, I think, is just have a look at that. It's just about right. Maybe if I change it to a 1. A 1, I think, is nice enough there. And we'll leave that as a white color. On the border radius, was that the roundedness? So we change that to 5. It should all have that roundedness to it. And we can do the same if we wanted to hover, but we've got it on transparent, so I think that's fine. So on this button, we can actually want to change the hoverness to it. And we're going to change the text color is fine, but the background color, we're actually going to make that white, but not transparent. So when we hover over it, I'm actually going to change the text color as well. That would be a bit silly. So when we hover over it, I wanted to change that green that I've been using before. Try to use the same color that you've been using before. It's always good for websites to do that. So when we hover over it, it goes white with a green text. So that means we can see it when this is now gone. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to change the background image. So if we just double click on this or click it once and then go over to style. So we're now editing this box. And we're going to just put an image into the background now to get rid of this grey thing. Um, so just click on that and then you can upload files here. Um, and I've already uploaded some images already. Um, you can get great images as well at a website called unsplash.com. I'll have it in the description below. But you can get really high quality images to use for your website. And it's completely free as well. So I'm just going to put in this one here just to see what that one looks like. So there you go, it's now in. So what you can also do here is you can change the position. 
and you can also change the size and attachment to it but we're just going to concentrate on the position and the size so at the moment this is a default it kind of gets a good part of the screen done and if we change that to cover it's going to fill up as much as it can the images is, is a little bit big so it can't fill in that much but if we just find a better position for it center center maybe bottom center ah, i think i'll go for center center i think that's nice enough to get pretty much all the image i really wanted there so if you just save and we're just going to have a quick preview of what this looks like so if we go back to our dashboard and then open up our site it's starting to look a lot better but things aren't looking too great the color scheme isn't the greatest here um, a color scheme is really really important there is plenty of websites online where you can actually find um, learn a lot about color schemes and what really works with each other if you just type into on into your Google website color scheme there is this website called Coolors, C O O L O R S, and here you can actually generate a different color scheme. So I'll just show you what you can do here. So once you're here, this this website here will give you your color schemes. All you have to do is you press your space bar, and it gives you a random set. So that's kind of giving me the kind of color scheme I'm looking for. We might, if you look at my website, it's kind of got that naturey feel, um, all those greens and grays. These are the colors I'm going to try and stick by. So I'm actually going to try and keep an eye on these codes and I'm actually going to now implement them into my website. So using the stuff and the knowledge I've taught you before, um, I'm just going to go back and change the color scheme real quick. Hi there, so that's me back. I have just changed the color scheme of just my menu and just the font color here on the buttons just for it to match up with the picture and not stick out like a sore thumb. But I do hope that website with the color schemes does help and just to give you a better idea on what colors work with each other. So once we've done that, we're just actually going to go back and finish off making that home page. So just click on Edit with Ed on Elementor and get back to that Elementor page builder. So here we are. What we're going to do now is we're going to add in a new section just by that. And we're going to click on the one block structure. And there it is there. And what we're going to do here is we're going to throw in another heading. And for this title, we're just going to type in, for me anyway, um, to make the world a better place. And we're going to align that into the center. And we'll leave the size at the moment. Maybe just change it to medium, large, let's have a look. Yeah, I'll keep it large. And we're going to go to style. And we're going to give it a color. And so for the color of this, I'm going to go for one of my dark greens using my color schemer. And then that'll be fine. And I'm going to go down to advanced. And the margins, I'm now going to unlink them together so I can change them separately. And for the top, I'm going to use 50. And for the bottom, I'm going to use 50, which gives it enough space from the top and the bottom to make it, just give it enough more space. Let's have a quick look at everything else. Do we maybe change the font? And we'll have a look here. I think we change the default, so we'll just leave it as that. And once you're done, just click save. And just before I finish that one off there, I'm just going to change the weight here to 300. And then click save. And we're now going to, just going to add a new section. And this time it's going to be three columns. So we've got the three columns there. And if we go back to our little widget section, we're going to throw in an image here. And once you've put your image again, we're going to put in a text editor directly underneath, just like that. And we're going to click on the text just like that. And we're going to click on this button, the toolbar toggle, just to give us a few more options. And we're going to make sure this is aligned into the center. And we need to change the padding of this as well. So if we go to advanced and we unlink those values together, we can change the right to 20. And we can change the left to 20 as well, just to give it a little bit more space on the inside. Remember, padding is from the inside. And next, we're going to go back to the widget menu, so click that button up at the top. And we're going to use a button this time, and that's going to be underneath the text. So we'll make that into the center, and I'm also going to change the color of this to the one that matches my other ones. So you yeah, like do as you normally, just go to advanced, oops, sorry, style, and then the background color and the text ground color the text color 
So I'm just going to change my settings for them now. Uh, so as you can see, I've changed my button to the brown one like I did before. And when it hovers over it, it goes into the green. Uh, it's great. Uh, so once you've done the button, what we're going to do now is duplicate this whole row into this other ones here. So to do that, if we go up onto this thing here, into the edit column, and we're actually going to click on duplicate column, and then we're going to press it again. So we're now going to just drag the whole column and move them. When we're given too many columns, what we're going to do is now close some of these. So remove that column and we're going to remove this column as well. I've duplicated it as well. So now they have three columns of the images, 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 text, text, text and three buttons. So we're now actually going to just choose our images that we want to put in here. So if you just click on the image thing there and choose image over here, uh, you can actually just put in your images. So you can either choose the ones that are in your media library or you can go to upload files, of course, and go pick whatever image you want to use. But for now, I'm just going to use some random examples here. I will just throw that trees in there and we'll add in another one. And put in that one over there. And then this one, I will just use this one over here. So now that we've got the three images, we'll now start editing the text. So for the first one, this is going to be just going to be our services one. So just put a little small headline there. And then we're actually going to hover over here. And we're going to find a button that allows us to paste our text. Paste this text. There you go. We're going to click on that. So paste is now in plain text mode. So that means when you paste in text that you've copied from another place um, it's not gonna like if you copied it over from Microsoft Word it's gonna try and paste in some of the settings that you used in Microsoft Word but they won't work here so if you click on this you can paste anything that you like I'm just gonna get that X away so it gets out of my way so I'm yep, just gonna paste something there and then I'm gonna change just get a couple there to make it look a bit better and we'll align that into the center and services, we will change that to a heading free, and we'll also put that in the center. And then for the next one, this will be called our work. And I've got some things copied over here. And I will paste that just underneath. Make sure that is centered. Oh, I've spelled a spell mistake, inspired. Make sure that's in the center. I'll make sure that is as well, because it doesn't look very centered, does it? Yeah, that's centered, is it? Oh, services is. All of it in the center, whatever. And I'll work, get that in the center as well. And then for the last one, I'll get my copy over there. And that's going to be our contact us. centered I'll get a bit more space down there that's annoying isn't it I will we'll change contact us here to the heading and we'll center it oh, just made a mistake there and our work will change that to a heading free as well there we go there we go, that lines up all the images and all the buttons well as well. So now we, we can start doing the buttons. So if we click this one, we'll give it a title as well, our services. And that will link to forward slash services. So we'll go to our services page that we made earlier. And then we'll do the same for this one, but this one's going to be our work. We'll do the same for that one as well. And on the hour work one, that's going to be forward slash hour dash work. And then last one, contact us. And then that will go to our contact page. We'll call it contact or we call it contact us. Ooh. I've lost the image. I'll put that back. So yeah, I think it's just contact. Oh, I'm doing it again. Right, so do 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 do. Make sure the link says 
forward slash contact or contact us, whatever it is that you did, and then click save. So that's that little bit of section now done. And so now if we go down here where it says add new section and we're going to add two. And what we're going to do here is just going to change the color of that. So we're just going to click on edit section for that section. Go to style and classic background type. And we're just going to give it a gray color, a little, a little light gray, just a little, a little light gray. And then if we go to advanced and we're going to be changing these margins. So unlock them. So this is going to be 50 and that's going to be left at zero. Right, so once you've done that, we're going to be changing this. So unlink this, the padding, and that's going to be 40 on the top and 40 on the bottom. So that gives us a bit more space. And we're going to throw in a widget now, and it's going to be a heading. So, yep, drag a heading in there. And this is going to say our work. I'm not typing anything there. And we're going to be going to style, turning on typography. And we're going to put the size up a bit to maybe like 34 and line height. We're going to put that to 0 0.7. So we're just going to go to advanced and then from here we're going to unlink the margins and we're just going to change the top to 20. And once you've done that, we're just going to go back to the to the wee widget thing. And now we're going to throw in, sorry, a text editor underneath our worker, our work. And just underneath on it. There we go. And here we're just going to change the text to something else here. We're going to make sure it says the paste as text as well. And we'll delete all that. So now I'm just going to type in some we believe actions speak louder than words. And we can, of course, change this text, whatever we like. We could center it or align it to the left. And we'll probably line it to the left. And we can change the, the font color and all of that as well. So here we're going to go back to the add element page. And we're actually going to throw in the columns into this section here. So now we can have two buttons here. That's what the plan is. But we're just going to go into style and advanced there and we're just going to give it a margin so for the margin here we're just going to unlink the values and we're just going to put in a 27 there in the top other than that that's fine so we're going to go back to add element and we're going to throw in a button here and we're going to change the text on this to be so this button is going to tab we're going to change the text of that and that's going to say our services and that's of course going to link to our services page and we'll align that to the right and we're going to go to style and turn typography on and we're just going to change the size to about 16 pixels and we will go down and of course going to change the background color to one that we've been using before and we're going to change scroll down get rid of this border radius we're actually going to put on five for all of that just give it that rounded edge like before and we should really do the same for them ones as well and now if yep that's that one done so we can add another element so now we're just going to throw in the second button here and of course it's changed it to that and we'll just check out our work and our link is going to go to our work page, so forward slash our dash work. Maybe align that to the left, oh, that's fine. And style, we're just going to turn typography on. The pixel size seems to be fairly fine at the moment. Let me just change it just to match up. I think it was 16 before, wasn't it? Or maybe a little bit more. But trying to make sure that they're all the same size. And we're just going to go down here. And I'm actually going to change the background color to be completely transparent. And I'm going to change the text color to be that green. And text padding, I'm going to change that to 5. I'm just going to double check what how big that one is. Do, 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 16. 
And I'll change that one to 16 as well. Oh, it is 16. That was pretty good. Oh, yeah. And we're going to give it a border type as well. So we're going to put that as a solid line. And we're going to make that one. Border radius. We'll make that a five. Text pattern. I should remove that text pattern. There we go. That's what I did wrong. It was the border radius that needs to be five, not the text pattern. Text pattern, just leave that as it is. So the buttons are the same size. So once you're done with that, just click save. So as you can see, we've created our home page now and it's looking great. But there is only one more problem, and that is when we go to open this on a mobile or on a smaller page, it's gonna look really rubbish. I'll show you what I mean now. So this would be like the mobile version. On your mobile, it would squeeze it all down. And as you can see, it's stacked up our freedom title. Our buttons are all a bit weird. And if we scroll down, we can see here that it's all gone a little bit wrong as well. But I'm going to show you what we can do to fix this and to make it completely mobile friendly. So if we just go back to the website and click on Edit with Elementor. So the first thing we're going to do is go up to the top here where it says Duplicate Section. And we're going to click that. So now we have two versions of that screen. And what we're going to do is make it so one is visible only on desktops and the other one is only visible on mobiles. If you do this, your website will be better than 95% of other websites because most people just don't bother trying to make their site mobile friendly. So the second one is going to be our mobile one. So if we click on our heading and go to style, you can see that it's the size of, let's say, 127. And this is going to be too big for the mobile. So what we're going to do is reduce that to, I don't know, let's say 61. And then we're also going to click on our buttons and we're going to align them to the center. These columns on mobile versions will stack on top of each other. So I know it doesn't look right now, but once it appears on mobile, it's going to look a lot nicer. So you're probably wondering how we're going to be able to make this show only on mobile and this one only on desktop. I'll show you how to do that now. So if you go to the top one, the one that we're going to show on desktop and click on edit section. And if then we now go to advanced. And if we go to responsive. Here it says visibility. This is remember this is our desktop version, so we don't want to hide it on desktop, we want it to have it on show. We don't want to hide it on tablet, we want it to be on show, but on mobile we want it to be hidden. So if we click that, this section here will not show on the mobile, only this one will. So we're now going to go to this one, click on edit section. And now we're going to click on advanced. We're going to go down to responsive and we're going to hide it on desktop and we're going to hide it on tablet. And once you're done there, just click save. So if we scroll down from here, this section was fine. This kind of just looked all right on the mobile. It came down in one singular block at a time, which is fine. But here is where it did mess up again. So we're just going to duplicate this. And on the first one, we're going to click on advanced, go to responsive and we're going to hide on mobile. And then on the bottom one, we're actually going to quickly edit this first. So we're going to change the title to be in the center. And then we're going to do the same with the text. And then we're going to do the same with the buttons. And now if we go to advanced and responsive, we're going to get this to hide on desktop and hide on tablet. And then we're going to click save. So now if we go to view our page, it's looking great on desktop. We've got, there's nothing's been duplicated or anything like that. But if we check on our mobile version, and then we give this a refresh, you can see that everything now fits all in the center. And when you're scrolling through a mobile, it's going to look a lot nicer than what it did before. So that's it done. That's our homepage looking snazzy and great. And I hope yours is looking fantastic as well. But we're going to move on to the next section, which I think is going to be our about page.
So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to edit our about page. So if we go up and click on our about page on the menu, you can see it's fairly blank. We do have the website, well the page title here of the about, and we have this side panel here with our recent posts and comments and stuff. But what we're going to do is actually going to remove this and remove the sidebar just so we can have a clean slate to edit with. So to do that, we just need to click on edit page up here. And then scroll down to these settings here and where it says content layout, we're going to change that to 100% full width. And then for the title, where it says display page title, we're going to put disable. Scroll up and click update. And if we go back to our about page, it's now completely blank. So now that our about page has a clean slate, we're now going to start editing it. So if you edit the page with Elementor and you get to the list page here again, we're going to click on add new section. And for this, we're going to pick on the, the three columns there. So you've got one, two and three, and we're actually going to resize these. So if you grab it from the middle and we want it 30 on the left, 30% on the left, just see if I can, there we go. And then the same on the right. So that means it's 40 in the middle and 30 on the right and then 30 on the left. And with this, we're going to click here on edit section and we are going to go to style and we're going to click on the background type of classic and now we're going to put an image in. I've got myself an image earlier here so I'm just going to put that in and as you can see we can barely see any of it so we're just going to scroll down in the same edit part and we're going to change the position to center center and we're going to change the size to cover and now we still can't see it so with this we are now going to add in another widget so if you grab and drag the text editor and put it into the middle and here's where we're going to put in the text I'm going to click on that paste as text so I'm able to paste in my own writing and now I'm going to change I'm going to center that as well and I'm now going to click off that oh. and I'm going to click on style make sure it's in the center yep and text color I'm going to make it a nice whitish color somewhere around there ed 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 that will be nice I'm going to click off that oh click style and we're going to click on typography here and we'll change the size a little bit just a little bit and then we'll change the weight to, to 300 and now we're going to click on advanced up at the top and we're going to unlink our margins and we're going to put the top at about 150 and the bottom is going to be 350. So as you can see we've ex extended the image and it's fully fitting on the website now. And as well with this text box you can also fill it in with a bit of color. So if we go to style again so once you've done your margins we're just going to scroll down and go to background and background type classic and we can now actually put a color in in the background of this just to make it have that bit more impact on the screen. So I'm just going to go for like a dark grey and you can even change the visibility of it as well. I actually kind of like that. So I'm just going to have it slightly see-through and then we're going to click save. And if you go back to your about page and give it a refresh and you can see that is looking fantastic now. We've got a massive image um, and our mission statement. So as you can see, our about page is coming in lovely. This is only the top side of it, so we are now going to go back to our Elementor page builder and we're going to scroll down and add a new section. Again, we're going to use the three columns. That way the text doesn't go across through the side. So that's why we've done that up here. We've put three columns and put the text in the middle so it doesn't stretch right across. 
So with this one, we're going to be changing the borders of these, or well, the width of them, to 15% on both sides. Just try and get that done accurately. There we go. And we're now going to throw in a text editor into the middle. And we're going to paste in our text that we're going to write in here. So we'll just click on the paste this text. And then we're going to center that. And we're going to go into style. Make sure it's in the center. The gray color I reckon will be a nice. Let's see if I got a nice one. I think 70, 70, 70 is nice. There we go. And now we're going to click on advanced. Nope. We're going to click advanced and back into style. And we're going to turn typography on. And we're going to change the size to 23. And we'll change the weight to, to 300 to make it a little bit thinner. And from here, we're just going to click on advanced. And we're going to unlink these values. And we're going to change the top margin to be 100. And the bottom margin to be 100. Just to give it that extra space. And once we're done, we're going to click save. And X out of that and view our page. So as you can see, we've got the top. And now we've got this bit section as well. So now that we've done that... Sorry, now that we've done this part, we are now going to do the third part of our About page. So if we go back to our Elementor page builder and we scroll down, we're going to add in another section and we're going to put three columns in. And here I'm going to put in three images just to showcase like me and my cat and my dog. So for the first block here, we are going to click on this little button here where it says Edit Column. And from here, we're going to click on Style, Background Type Classic and image and I'm just going to put in my dog over here and as you can see nothing's come up yet but that's fine what we're going to do now is go back to the Elementor widget section and we're going to throw in a spacer into this box as you can see it's started to show a bit of the image so we're just going to change this spacer here to say 200 and we're still not quite there so we're going to click on this edit column again Go to Style, scroll down, and for Position, we're going to put Center, Center, and for Size, we're going to go for Cover. So there you go, that's the image perfectly put in now, and we're going to do the same for here. So click on Edit Column on the middle, Style, Classic, Image, and this one I'll click a picture of me. And while I'm here, I'll just do the back position, Center, Center, Size, Cover, and we'll go back to pick a different element and we're going to throw in the spacer and this spacer we will change to 200 and then we'll do the same for the third one so edit column style background type classic image and then this time I'll go for my cat and so that image in as well and we're going to scroll down center center size cover and then back to the different elements and then we're going to throw in the spacer. And just to make sure, we'll change the spacer to say 200. Once you're done, just click Save. And the last thing we've got to do on our About page is just make sure that these images go right across the page full width. So to do that, on the top whole section, we're going to click on Edit. And where it says Content Width, we're going to put Full Width. You might not be able to notice it right away, but if you click save and then exit and view page, you can see our about page is completely finished now. We've got our images in there, we've got a text, and we've got this massive image with a bit of text in as well. And it's looking beautiful. So that's our about page complete, and we'll move on to the next section. So the next section we're going to do is going to be our work page. So if we just click on our work, you can see that we have that page title and the sidebar. So that's the first thing we're going to do is get rid of that. So if we click on edit page here, 
and if we scroll down and where it says content layout put 100% full width and on the left hand side go to title and disable it. Scroll back up and click update and we're now going to edit with the Elementor which we can press over here So once you get to the Elementor page, we're going to add in a new section and it's going to be three columns. And we're going to make sure that it's going to be dragged over so it has 20 on one side and 20 on the other. So that means it's 60% in the middle. And what we're going to do now is just going to throw in a heading into the middle. And here is our text and I'm just going to copy and paste something I wrote earlier. And we're going to align that into the center and we're going to click on style and change the text color to a bit more of a gray. I think I'll change it to 72, 72, 72. It was a nice color. And we're going to click on style again and click on typography. And we're going to change the size just to make it a little bit bigger. Pick on something that you, you, you think is nice. And we'll change the weight to 300, just to make it a little bit thinner. And we're going to put in a little bit of spacing in the letters. Maybe change that letter spacing to 2, actually. Perfect. And with this, we're going to duplicate it. So this one here with the, the two pages, we're going to press that twice. So we're going to have three of them. And we're now going to type in or paste in the different bits of text for each side. So I'm just going to do that now. I'm just going to change that to home and not ho. And then for the last one, let's copy and paste. Great. So the only problem with this text is that it's awfully close together. So we're going to click on the top one here and we're going to go to advanced, unlink the values together and we're going to type in 150 in the top and 150 in the middle, I'm sorry, the bottom. And then we're going to do the same thing for the rest of them. One fifty at the bottom, click on the last one, advanced, unlink them, top 150, bottom 150, and then click save. Right then, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add in some big images in here. So add new section, and we're just going to go for one. And from that one, we're going to drag in a spacer directly into the middle of it. And we're going to change the space to 400. So this is where our images are going to be put into. So if we click on edit section on this new big space area and then go to style, click background type classic and image. And I've got some images from earlier. So the first one I'm going to use is my ocean one. So that's inserted in and I'm going to put the position center center and then size as cover. So that's fitted that in perfectly. And what we're going to do now is duplicate these two sections or well, this section here twice. So now that we have it three times, so we're going to go to the second one and we're going to edit this and we're going to go to style and we're going to change that image to a different one. And I'm going to use my mountain ones here. So that's looking great as well. So now I'm going to go to the bottom one, click on edit section, style, background type classic and image. I'm going to pitch this one of the night sky and showing off the stars. And center center doesn't look awfully that great, so I might put it down to bottom center, or I might even have a look at top center. I think I might actually go with center center. And then with that, actually I'll put bottom center, it's probably nicer. There we go. And with that, we're just going to click save. So to now finish off this, uh, um, this uh, our work page, what we're going to do now is put these images in their correct places. So if you where it says edit section, if you just click and drag, scroll up to the top and we're going to put it underneath the first quote. And then we're going to do the same for the second one. 
put in underneath them ones. And then the final one is going to be already in position. So if we click save and close and view our page, you can see that we've now got a beautiful Our Work page and it looks absolutely stunning. So in the next section, we are now going to be doing our services page. So if we click on services, and you can see that we've still got our title and our sidebar, which we're now going to remove by clicking on edit page. And we're gonna scroll down and our content layout, we're gonna change that to 100% full width and the title we are gonna disable. Scroll on up, click update, and now click on edit with Elementor. So for this section here, we are just going to add a new section and it's gonna be the two column structure. And for the first column side, we're gonna throw in a heading. And for this heading, I'm just gonna call it relax. Of course, you can write it whatever you like. And then I'm gonna to go to style, change the text color to like a dark grayish. Click on style again, turn typography on. I'm gonna change the size of this to 38 pixels and change the weight to 300. I'm then going to click on advanced. I'm going to unlink the values of the margin and I'm going to change the top margin to 25. And with that, I am now going to add in a new element and it's going to be a text editor, text editor directly underneath. And here we can then paste in our text. That's what I've written down here. You can of course be writing whatever it is that you're going to be advertising. And now we are going to put in a image. So once you've put your text in, we are now going to add in the image to the right hand side. So just plop in an image to the right. And then we're going to choose our image. And I'm going to choose a relaxing one over here. I'm going to put that in there. I'm now going to duplicate this section. And I'm going to swap these over. So if we click and drag the image and drag it over to the left, it switches them over. But we're now we're going to change this text, the, the heading over here for mine is going to be begin. And I'm going to paste in my text. So that's that one done. So now that we've got two of them, I'm now going to make the third. So I'm going to duplicate the first one. And I'm going to drag it down to the third position. And I'm going to change this to say reflect. And I'm going to paste in the text for that one. And once that one's done, I'm now going to duplicate the second one and drag it down to the bottom. And I'm going to change the heading to enjoy and paste in my other text. Remember to always make sure it says paste as text and paste it in. And I should uh, fix some spelling mistakes. And there we go. And all we need to do now is change these images to be different images. So we go to the second one, delete that, and then put in the next one. This is going to be my relaxing one. Oh, sorry, it's my beginning one. So we've got relax, begin, and then reflect. So I'm going to change that, delete that, and we'll put in this one. And then for the last one, We'll do the same, but change it to a different image. There you go. So once that's done, just click save. And close and view page. And as you can see, we've got a lovely looking services page here with images all the way down and headings and we can be writing whatever it is that you're going to be writing here that showcases off your services. But there's maybe one thing that we could get in here, maybe a, a call to action button. So let's get on to that. So the idea that I have is to use the same call to action that we did on our home page. Let's go click there now. This section here where it says our work, I want to be able to copy and paste this directly straight onto our services page. So to do that, we're just going to click Edit with Elementor.
and we're going to scroll down to the bottom and this one is our desktop version so we're going to click here where it says save section and we have to give it a name so let's call to action bottom and click save and then we're also going to save the mobile version as well so click save section and type in call to action mobile and then click save so now if we exit out of that and now go to our services page and click edit with Elementor and if we scroll to the bottom we can now add a template so if we click add template and then click my templates we can click in the call to action bottom so insert and there it is but we also want to put in our mobile version as well so add template my templates call to action mobile and that's great we should just double check to make sure these will let's go to advanced just make sure that they will be responsive in the same type as that they were before there we go so that's our mobile one so it's going to hide on desktop and on tablet and that's fantastic so now we can click save so all we're to do now is just change this to be a little bit more suited to our page so if we go to top and click on the edit section and go to style first thing I think to do is change it from grey back to a white so it matches up with the actual page do the same to the other one the mobile one great and now we can actually change our text here as well to something that maybe says something different like schedule a visit and then the text we can actually write something else as well just paste in something I wrote before so we can call our email to schedule a free day retreat or check out our work that's great and we can actually copy and paste this directly over so if we just oop, off click that click there duplicate column oh that was not correct so we can actually just copy this column here duplicate it and we can just drag it into this one and we can remove the other one remove it by clicking like here X there so now it matches up with what we said before and now we can also change our buttons as well and we can also change the font color of this if you wanted as well I think I will just to match it with the rest so style text color and a nice dark gray and I should do the same for that one as well style text color and try and get that gray again try to make it the same color unlike me it's probably a different shade but it should be fine and now over here where our button that says our services we can get that to say schedule so when it clicks on this it will then take them to the contact page and then do the same for that one as well so it will now say schedule and take you to the contact page sorted and we just click save and let's have a quick view of that view the page so that looks, looks great that looks great we keep going down and there we have a schedule visit call to action button and if we click schedule it takes us to the contact page perfect and actually the last thing I think that should be done in this page is just to change the color of maybe this side and this side of the text stuff just to put that you can differentiate the different sections here is all so if we go to the top one hit edit section style classic and color we really do, all it has to be is a really light gray so even yeah f4 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 actually looks kind of nice so f4 f4 it's just a little bit of a gray just so you can notice that it is different and do it for the same for the third section as well 
So F4, 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 and it just goes to a little bit extra gray, and it really just splits up the pages, and it's a lot nicer on your eyes, and it really is the little things that really make your website better. So we'll just click Save, and let's have a view of that page. As you can see, you can just tell the difference of the pages. That's exactly what I wanted it to do. Perfect. So the next section we're going to do is going to be the contact page. And like before, we're going to remove the page title and the sidebar. So click on edit page. And scroll on down. And make it 100% full width on the content layout and title disabled. Click update. And then edit with Elementor. I'm going to close these pages here for the time being. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add in a Google map. So if we click on add section and we're going to just go for the one and here on the left where it says Google Maps we're going to drag and drop it straight in and here is where you can just type in your your business address or where it is that you want to say that you're from I was going to put Belfast real quick and um, Belfast Northern Ireland is pretty much where I am at the moment actually I'll just put it where I am Bangor County down All right, so that will do there. And from here, you can see that it has a white side on the left, a white side on the right, and on the top. And we can fix this by clicking on here where it says Edit Section. And where it says Content Width, we are now going to change that to Full Width. And Columns Gap, we're going to change it to No Gap. You may notice that the top bar still has a bit of white but this does only show while you're editing via the Elementor on your actual page it won't actually show that so that's perfectly fine right then so for the next step is that we're going to add in a new section here and we're going to go for this one on the right here where it has a bigger section on the left than it has on the right and what we're going to put in there is just a simple text editor and then we can delete all that and we're just going to write email I'm going to bold that, so that's control B if you're on an APC. And I'm just going to type in my email on bold. So that's... And feel free to email me if you do have any questions or anything like that to, to help out. That's no problem at all. And then if you press enter, it does a quite a big gap. And we don't want to do that. So backspace again, just to the end of the line. And now if you press shift and enter, it does a small gap, so it's directly underneath. And here I'm going to write my phone number. So that's in bold. Oh, I accidentally pasted something in there. Do, 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 do. So that's unbolded, and I'm going to type in my number. So area code, mm, mm, oh, that's still bolded. Oh. So, I want it to. And then, of course, oh, press enter again. So shift enter to go directly underneath. And here is where you'd put your address. I'm just going to type in my town. And of course, you put in your actual address or whatever. Northern Ireland. And I think we're just going to do a little bit of margin change in there. So if we go to advanced, uncheck them, and we can put them at 15 at the top and 15 at the bottom. Not 150, but a 15. And of course, you can change your text font or anything like that. And that's fine. Um, but we're done with that. We're going to add in a new element now. So what we're going to do here is just going to throw in an image directly underneath our contact details. And just click that image. I'm just going to use a picture of myself again. It is a little big, so I'm just going to reduce the size of that and align it to the left. So I've just changed my image size to a medium one, that's a lot nicer, and then I'm just going to click save. 
So what we have to do now is get a contact form. And to do that, we have to go out of this. So you click exit and go to dashboard. And we need to get a plugin because WordPress doesn't actually come with the, the form that we need. So if we go to plugins and add new, And if we type in contact form, we're looking for one called contact form seven, which has over a million active installs. It is the one you want to be really using. And then just click install now and activate. And once that has been activated, you'll see on the left hand side that you'll now have a contact page. So if we click on that contact form and if we click into there again, you can see this is what the, the, the form originally comes in at. It will ask you for your name. It will then ask you for your email, the subject, and the message. This is what the viewer will see. And then if you go to click on mail, you need to make sure that under two, it says your email that you want to receive these emails to. So if that's correct, that's fine. And all we have to do then is see here, this is a short code. We're going to copy this. And this is what's going to paste into our page. Um, so you see here where this short code is called and we want to copy that this whole page there that means sorry that whole little line of writing and then we need to go to our pages on all pages and under contact we need to go edit with elementor and the element that we're going to be using is one called short code so there it is i'm just going to click and drag it over there and here is where the short code we need to paste in so delete that and paste in our new one, which will then paste in our contact form. The only thing I would say is a little bit off with that is that it's a little bit too close to the map. So we're going to go to advanced, unlink the margins, and give it a margin at the top of 15, which I think is fine. Once you're done, just click save. And we can go view the page. So you can see we've got a nice looking contact page. We've got a map of our location. We have our contact details, an image of ourselves, and a form for other people to contact us in. What I would recommend is maybe not using this sized picture, but a picture that fills up most of this screen. It was just my picture of me was a little bit small. So yeah, I'll maybe just pick a nice big image that would fit in this whole block there, which would be no problem at all. So that's our contact page completed and um, I really hope you enjoyed that one it, it, and hope it looked a little bit better than mine because mine's a little shoddy looking I really wish I did pick a bigger image but that's fine and the next thing that we're going to do is create our logo so in this next section I'm going to show you a way to create your own logo as it is now we just have our business name this is this can be fine if, if you are interested it's not a sort of huge problem just to have some text as your logo but if you do want to make your own open up a new tab and go to logo mkmakr.com so it's logo maker but with no e at the end and once you get into there it's going to ask you to make it into a logo name so just type in logo and click design All right. i'm going to remove that we're not going to use any text just yet um, I'm going to get up here, you can search for all these different icons and stuff that you might want to use. I'm just going to type in learning, just to see what I can get with that. And as you can see, you get a little bunch of icons, which are pretty much perfect for making a logo. Have a, have a look around, find something that suits your niche or that suits your, your business, and, and then find something. So I'm just going to click this one here for the time being, it's not too bad. And if you wanted, you could put some text to the side of it. Just, you can just drag to move this. It is easy to do. There we go, we're going to just drag this to move that. And then you can type in, let's say, I don't know, your business name. You know? So you, you have a decent looking logo already. But I'm not going to use any text, that's fine. I'm just going to use a little icon, make it a little bit bigger. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to make this white. And to, you might have noticed that I can't actually see what I'm doing now. So what you can do is if you right click on the actual canvas here, you can click it to be the black background. So there you go. We can actually see my logo there. And this is the way I really want it. Just have that circle and it to be 
blank again. So I want it to have a blank background and I want it just to stick out on top of my...